This is a full guide that's gonna show you how to master React.js in 30 days or less. So let's get into it. The reason why you should learn React is because it's one of the most popular libraries out there and this library is gonna guarantee you a place in the marketplace. So if you wanna make money with code as a software developer, as a front-end developer, you absolutely must know this library and you have to master it. This guide will serve as a reference and it's gonna be some sort of checklist and as you go through your course on YouTube, on Udemy, whatever you want to do to learn if you don't want to buy my stuff, this guide is going to serve as a reference. As you go through whatever course and path you're following, go back to this course and check off every single concept that you have learned from this course structure. This is going to cover the 20% that's going to give you the 80% of the results. So I don't want to waste your time with bullshit. I don't want to waste your time with irrelevant technologies or irrelevant concepts that you have to learn, I'm going to show you only what you need that's going to make you extremely productive in this day and age. So as you can see on my screen, we have some prerequisites. I think that's how you say that, uh, because you cannot just get into React uh, after like two or three days of coding, okay? You need to have a solid foundation in JavaScript. And I found that most of the time, people that come to work with me after they've been following, I don't know, two, three years of coding courses, they don't know basic data manipulation techniques, okay? So before you even think about getting into React, you should become an array methods expert. I've made a video here on this channel where I introduce this uh, exercise where I make you replicate array methods so you know how they work behind the scenes, okay? A lot of people that have experience as developers, once they saw that video, they said, okay, I wish I knew this before I started uh, my career as a JavaScript developer because most of the time you'll be using tools and you don't understand how they work. And if you don't understand how they work, you won't be able to use them properly and you'll always be like in some sort of fog. It's like you're driving with your eyes blind. You don't wanna do that. So there is a video on my channel where I talk about replicating array methods, go and do that. But let's say you don't want to do that, you want to skip because you are, I don't know, in a rush to learn React, then you must know by heart how for each, how map and how filter works. These are array methods. You must absolutely nail those down. Otherwise, you will have a very tough time cracking React. I cannot stress this enough, okay? Please listen to me. Okay, I'm trying to sell you on this because this is super important. And also, a bonus, I would recommend you to go on this website called Code Wars, where you do algorithms and stuff like that. And I want you to reach level five. I make all my students reach level five before they can unlock the React course. Because if you get to level five, you'll have a decent understanding of like basic algorithms and you will not struggle going through the React portion of your front-end developer journey, if that makes sense. These are the prerequisites. Obviously, there are a lot of other things that you should know, like manipulating the DOM and so on and so forth, but I'm just gonna assume that you know that. Let's get into the roadmap. So something that I do, which is extremely weird compared with all the other courses that are out there, is that I teach class-based components. So if you are new to React and if you don't know anything about React, or if you have some knowledge of React, maybe you heard of this concept of a class-based component. I'm not gonna show it to you here. You can go ahead and Google it because you need to learn how to Google stuff by yourself. But essentially, nobody is really teaching that and uh, nobody is really using that. Nobody, right? If you end up working in a company, you'll be surprised that you'll be working on projects that have been developed, you know, seven, eight, maybe 10 years ago, okay? And uh, these projects are still using class-based components and you'll, probably have to go in those projects and change things, add new things, debug things, fix things, right? Add on top of that. And if you do not understand how class-based components work, you'll come in with a deficit. You'll have a handicap. And that's why I recommend you to learn from the beginning class classes, class components. So you'll have an easier time uh, when you'll end up in that situation because the likelihood of you getting into a situation like that is very high. I would say maybe to around 80, 90%. What I noticed is that if you learn class-based components first, the hooks, which is another concept that you learn about later, will come to you way easier because hooks assume that kind of you understand 
a lot of concepts that uh, classes have introduced and a lot of people are saying that hooks are way easier than classes and to a certain extent I agree but for a beginner making the transition from classes to hooks is going to be way smoother um, if you understand the basic theory of how classes work okay and also classes have something called error boundaries so you can prevent parts of your application from crashing with hooks if one component of your page crashes let's say something here crashes with with hooks and with functional components your entire application will crash but if you use classes you can use error boundaries which will stop your application from crashing just parts of it will crash and then you can contain the rest of the issues okay that's my take and then also class-based components have some extra features that uh, you need to be aware of i'm not going to mention them in here because they are quite advanced okay so i will start with classes then i would learn about components and i would try to make as many components as possible just to get how this concept works and then I will learn about props. This kind of come hand in hand. And then in this Google Doc, and by the way, I'm gonna leave this Google Doc um, if this video reaches 50 comments. So comment Google Doc underneath this video. And whenever there will be like 50 comments, I'm gonna reply to your comment with this Google Doc so then you can reference it because I put some uh, extra links and extra resources for you to learn in here. So I found a website that looks like this. It's not too easy and it's not too complicated. I spent like 20 minutes trying to find the right one because if it's too easy, then you won't learn. If it's too complicated, then you'll give up. So I think this is a good um, website to recreate so you can learn how components and how props work, okay? Uh, again, comment Google Doc underneath this video and I'm gonna leave this Google Doc for you so then you can reference it. Then you need to learn about state. You need to learn about events like click, mouse over, typing whenever you type something you're an input and so on and so forth you need to know, learn about callbacks lifting state up which is a very important concept if you're a beginner it's kind of difficult to explain this to you in a video like this but if you go to the react docs they explain it pretty well and rendering list okay this is very important because if you if you notice like if you go on the internet literally anywhere you'll notice that there are a few key things that happen every single time we have events that trigger fetching data so you land on twitter right on the twitter website then what will happen is twitter the client the front end will ask the back end to give you the most recent tweets from people that you are following right and then you get a huge list of tweets right that's a list then each tweet has comments that's another list okay so you need to learn how to work with lists okay and i left here again another resource on how to render a list because this thing called the key is very important it's a very important concept in react and you should 100 percent uh, learn this okay and why you shouldn't do things in a certain way we have another important concept called derived states think about an omelet i have bought many courses uh, many programming courses because i wanted to do my research into like what other people are teaching right and i noticed that a lot of people are teaching you how to use very basic concepts and they never get into the meat and the potatoes of how to combine different things to get different outputs right and whenever we are making an omelet right we have multiple ingredients we have eggs we have the ham we have the butter we have the pan the type of pan we we use to make the omelet then we have the what's the name the onions and whatever you put in the omelet you mix everything together and then you put that omelet and then you prepare it and then you eat it right but with two basic ingredients we com combine them and then we got something else now it's kind of the same way uh, with react and with states we can combine different things to get different outcomes right and i want to show you this thing again i'm going to leave the link for this in this google doc and check this out so here we have a list right and i search for dog over here and then if i add some filters like for example i want to see uh, only english ads uh, then i want to see only videos and i want to see only active ads right 
So now I'm gonna apply these three filters. And essentially what I did is I took one state, which is the list of ads. Then I applied another type of state, which is the language that I wanna see the ads in. Then I applied another type of filter, which is the media type. I only wanna see videos and I only wanna see active ads. So I added multiple types of states combine them and I got something else. This is kind of how I describe this omelette, if you may. And it's a very important concept to understand if you want to get really good, okay? Then uh, we have lifecycle methods and we have API calls. I introduced API calls and uh, networking and stuff like that very late in my program because I believe that you as a beginner should focus on the basics and you should nail those basics and you should be tired of the basics. And then when you are tired of the basics, then we introduce a new concept because otherwise you'll be overwhelmed if every single day you get a new concept, a new concept, a new concept. Like your mind gets tired and you won't be able to learn and then you'll give up, right? You don't want to give up. You want to do it in a methodical, systematical way. Systematical, I hope that's a word. And then and only then, once we've learned all this, then we get into hooks. And my approach to hooks is to take everything we've built so far Again, you're gonna follow your course or your courses or your roadmaps, whatever you are following. And then at some point you'll build an app, okay? You have to build an app. You cannot just read theory. This whole thing should be applied to an application. And I'm gonna tell you what application to build in a second, don't worry about that. But then we take that application and then we convert it into hooks because we need to understand why are hooks better and then how do you translate something made with classes into hooks and then hooks will click and then you'll understand them okay and then you learn about something called custom hooks uh, again i'm not gonna get into this but your course should cover this again this is like a checklist if you've done this 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 that means you understand the basics of react okay uh, you also need to learn about context a very important concept that you need to really get and it's gonna make your life so much easier, I cannot even explain how much easier your life is gonna be. And then we have a test, okay? Here, I have uh, an app that looks like this. It's a very basic to do app, but it's very powerful because it includes all these concepts, okay, that uh, I have explained in here. And I have some requirements for this, right? And if you wanna get the requirements, for this application so you can build them at the end of your course, whatever course you're following. Comment Google Doc below this video and I'm gonna give you the Google Doc once we have 50 uh, comments. And then you can test yourself, okay? Have I really learned all this? Because if I cannot build this application from over here, then that means you didn't learn it and that's a good sign. Bad feedback is still feedback. We just need to understand it. If you struggle with something, that means you do not understand some concept you need to figure out what concept that is, then go back and relearn it. Three, five, seven, eight, nine, one hundred times until you really understand that thing. Do not move forward ever if you do not understand something at least 60-70%, okay? Because it's gonna pull you back. And then also on this Google Doc I have a, a list of interview questions. So then as you go to your course, as you're learning this stuff, you can use these interview questions to test yourself to see if you really understood certain things and then I want you to like speak out loud and if you see a question like okay what is the difference between state and props I want you to speak out loud and you can use this app that I'm using to record this video called Loom to record yourself as you are answering those questions and then you want to look back at what you said and then you want to judge yourself do I sound confident have I said the right thing could I improve the pronunciation of this thing, can I deliver this part a little bit better? You need to self-reflect every single time you do something, otherwise you will suck, you'll not know why you suck, and then you'll blame everyone else. Every single market nowadays is completely saturated. It doesn't matter if it's coding, marketing, sales, whatever it is, every single market is completely saturated and you need an edge, okay? And this checklist is gonna give you that edge guaranteed and you know what else is going to give you an edge my mentorship program you can join by clicking the first link in the description and i'm going to teach you every single thing you need to know to become a web developer and if i fail to do so in nine months or less i'm going to give you all the money back and five thousand dollars for wasting your time i'm pretty much forced 
to help you out and give you the best result. Otherwise, I'm gonna go bankrupt. Uh, so that's how much I am invested into uh, this roadmap that I have created for yourself, okay? So if you wanna know more about that, click the first link in the description and you'll speak either with me or someone from my team and we'll show you how everything works. But yeah, if you want this Google Doc, just comment uh, Google Doc underneath this video and let me know what you think about React. What are you struggling with? Is, uh, is it going as smooth as you wanted or are you having some difficulties?